episode of Quilt with the Stars is brought to you by Baby Lock for the love of sewing and Koala Cabinets, sewing furniture custom built in America. Thanks for watching Quilt with the Stars. I'm Mary Fonz, and I'm here with Nina McVeigh. Welcome to the show, Nina. Thank you, Mary. It's uh, the great uh, segment where we get to just just bask in the glory of all these quilts, <laughs> <laughs> and you've brought many beautiful things with you. Thank you. Today, um, let's start. Let's start by looking over here on the wall. Okay. Can you tell me about this quilt, Nina? Uh, this quilt is called um, Bold and Beautiful. Mm. So it is bold. <laughs> it is. It is both of those things. Uh, and this was actually very simple piecing. And then uh, with embroidery, it was enhanced with the applique flowers and the borders. And then it was quilted in the embroidery unit with the outline flowers. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then I went back in and free motioned in between all of those shapes. That's so really really cool. I just, uh, it's what you can do with embroidery and embellishment mm -hmm. is very inspiring to me. It's something I haven't played a lot with and I know I'm earlier on in my sewing and quilting journey. Um, it's something that's on the list, you know, to, to use those, utilize the tools that we have to make and, that. And quilting in the hoop, as far as those large black flowers yeah. in the center, this is probably the easiest quilting in the hoop that one could do because there's no exact placement sure, sure. or precise hooping. Great. Okay, let's take a look at this one too with the birds, these charming little birds. Um, again, uh, another, this was actually another embroidery collection. Mm -hmm. uh, so that the alphabet, it's more of a sampler quilt. Sure. So I have the alphabet, all the alphabet and the words in the quilt itself. Mm -hmm. Once the quilt was constructed, I've done a few different things. Uh, again, quilted with designs from the embroidery collection and although you might not be able to see it from standing here mm -hmm. the words inspire dream faith hope and love are quilted in the border ah. simply by using the those words but only stitching out the outline great uh, and then um, I've got a little embellishment there mm -hmm. by using uh, rickrack and I have used our bias binder and bound one edge of the rickrack mm -hmm. and then stitched that down and beaded the rickrack. Beautiful. So, uh, Nina, we were talking about what you do for uh, for a living, how you earn <laughs> your living, and you're you're a quilter and a, and a an educator trainer. Yes. So, so some of these quilts, before we go to the next one, would be um, jumping off places to teach, correct? Exactly. Got it. So exactly. Things that I put in a trunk show so that I Great. can share with people so they can be inspired to create um, something. Absolutely. Something Either the same thing or, or something else. Right, right. So mm -hmm. let's take a look at this, okay. this little guy. It's this uh, very, very cute and very on trend with the mm -hmm. owls. Mm -hmm. And your scallop, it's kind of a trademark. You do it all. Believe, I, the... I do like the scalloped edge. Mm -hmm. I like the scalloped edge because I do like to use the bias binder. Yes. And right. that's the easiest way to use it. This one is a little bit different because after I've done the bias binding with the bias binder, mm -hmm. I've gone back and I've stitched rickrack over the um, stitching line on the bias. So that's just another little... Um, trim right uh, and, and I could have done it in a higher contrast so mm -hmm. you would have seen it more but mm -hmm. I just wanted it to blend in and the, owl, the, the owl's binding. bodies are uh, <clears throat> more embroidery stitches yes Beautiful. yes yeah. um, applique and uh, applique in the hoop and then embroidery over the top of those owls charming and now this quilt too uh, this mm -hmm. last one we have on the wall mm -hmm. uh, this is one that will be featured in love of quilting magazine yes. correct yes does it have yes. a name yet um, mixed nuts I mixed think nuts. because Great. that to me looks like a hex nut absolutely <laughs> <laughs> it does. I didn't notice before, so, but as soon as you um, said it. I've called that a hex nut block, That's and great. it's a, an extremely simple block yes. to do. And then I've just scattered these around the quilt. Mm -hmm. um, whether, you, know, you, you don't even have to follow that pattern. You could just scatter blocks anywhere, so hence mixed nuts. Mixed nuts. That's very And clever. then because it is a modern looking quilt, mm -hmm. I didn't feel... Um, stippling or feathers or anything like that was appropriate mm -hmm. for quilting mm -hmm. so it's simply straight line quilting half an inch apart done with the walking foot on my sewing machine on Good. my Bernina. You know a friend of mine was saying that when it comes to uh, 
channel quilting, uh, free motion straight lines. She likes on her, she has a long arm, mm -hmm. but she actually likes doing free motion straight line quilting on her domestic sit down machine. I mean, you have a lot of control. Yeah. You have the control yeah. of your walking foot. I don't think it's the easiest thing in the world. I don't think so either. A lot of people think that, oh, that'll be easy. No. But if you're using a straight stitch and a straight line, if you're off at all, yes. you can tell. Absolutely. And so I might suggest someone mm -hmm. might use a slight wavy line. Yes. And that would blend. A beginner might use a, a, um, a wavy line. Yeah, absolutely. And maybe maybe do a smaller quilt to start. <laughs> It's pretty big. <laughs> yes. It's pretty big. Yes. Well, so we go from modern to uh, much more traditional, uh -huh. and, and you, you love making these quilts, these, correct? Yes, so tell yes. me about these gorgeous well, things. Well, this is, I like an heirloom looking piece. Yes. Um, a lot of the, well, these are designs out of our Bernina 830. These are Diane Gadinsky designs. She designed a collection for us to have in that machine. Mm -hmm. And so it's a matter of doing this in, in the embroidery hoop, and then mm -hmm. I went back with my own free motion stippling yeah. to enhance that design. And it's the same thing that I've done um, with this quilt, mm. really. Uh, it's also a Diane Godinsky design mm. from a collection, um, and it's been embroidered and then my free motion stippling. I think the look of this quilt, mm. the old look, the trapunto look, yes. uh, is due to the wool batting mm -hmm. and then the micro stippling, which flattens this but allows this to raise. To really raise. Mm -hmm. One layer of wool batting. It's just one layer. I just used one layer of okay. wool. Mm -hmm. If you did two layers of wool, would it be noticeable or would you really need to put in more than, than two? I don't think for this, especially mm -hmm. when you're doing this micro stippling, yes. you would want that. Okay. Um, I would never do this micro stippling on anything but wool ah. because you, these are just soft. <laughs> and if it was, if I had anything else in here, it would get stiff. If, and so I think two layers yeah. of wool might be overkill. Got it. Okay, I'm just getting into this double batting thing. I'm yes, really excited me too. by it. Me so too. neat. Yes. The quilts look so cool. They're yes. really well. They're really puffy, aren't they? <laughs> These. This is like like hammered marshmallow. I, can't, I wish you could you could feel how soft this is. And, I and mean, this, it's like it, part of it's the fabric too. And yeah. this is a 50% cotton, 50% silk. Mm -hmm. So that okay. makes a difference too. And, and there's one more. And there's one more. And and the reason I brought this one is the same style as that. But this was actually done with um, Quilt Motion Touch, which uh -huh. is the software that goes on our Bernina quilt frame. Okay. So this was done on my frame sure. with um, digitized designs. Uh -huh. And then, and of course, I arranged them like mm -hmm. this, but it, but again, it was uh, computerized quilting. Sure, and beautiful. then a little bit of my own stippling. And your scalloped edge. And my scalloped edge. <laughs> you can't resist. <laughs> it's so funny, I try to avoid scallops whenever possible, and you're just diving right in. And it's flannel on the back of this. And flannel on the back. Very yes. interesting. Very yes. interesting. Okay, how about this one? This one is... Um, one that was done, actually done around a an embroidery collection. Mm -hmm. So I use those pieces in the embroidery collection, and I and I like the the look that was created by using this design mm -hmm. around the outside for the like a border almost Absolutely. in there. And um, these are all, of course, done with it's done with three different colors of batik. But I think it's interesting when you cut up batiks and stitch them back together. Yes. They, get a totally different look. Right. I could have left this as a plain block of this fabric, yeah. but I think you get more depth when you cut it up and sew it back together. I, that's so I've never sewn a batik to a batik. It's it, its own batik, and mm -hmm. you're right, that's just mm -hmm. really interesting. And I also mm -hmm. would encourage someone looking at this quilt to imagine it without the red. You know, I mean, the red is like so extraordinary, it's so beautiful. It elevates the quilt to this, it mm. does something so extraordinary. Without it, it just wouldn't be the same. You're right. You know, it's you're like right. if you took the red away, uh, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't have quite that. Just kind of be flat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just love what you did with that. That's really, yeah. really cool. Thank Very you. neat. Okay. okay, and how about this one goes a little bit darker. Oh, well, now wait a minute. We have a little surprise. Oh. I hadn't seen that, <laughs> that is so cool. Well, you know, if you have an extra block, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or you're playing around and, and you're not quite sure what you're going to do mm -hmm. yet, but you're testing your embroidery. Uh, this is a great way to, to use that for your label. Oh, and the label is actually pieced in the backing. It's not sewn mm -hmm. to it, so right. it's actually quilted through, but it's a permanent part of the quilt. That is so cool. I like a little secret, a little bonus on the back. I do that on all my quilts. Not, not quite like that. But. So what about this one? This one uh, is one where uh, I encourage everybody who has a machine that does more than a straight stitch. Yes. 
and don't we all have machines that I do more so. than straight stitches, so. uh, to stitch out their decorative stitches. Yeah. And a lot of people find that, well, you know, what's that for? What am mm. I going to do it for? Mm -hmm. So I've just stitched out mm. my decorative stitches on a, um, squares and then quarter cut them wow. and pieced it with a coordinating fabric. That is a great so, idea. Um, this hangs in my sewing room, and I can refer to some of these stitches. Of course, when I'm when I'm uh, in my room stitching, that because those decorative idea. stitches will look different sewn out than they do diagrammed on your machine. That's true. They yeah. look better. Much they, better. They look much better. Much better. I would probably. I love this. This mm -hmm. is like I can't. I I love this. I want to do it. I also want to stitch in the number. And the setting. <laughs> yes, and some people have thing. done that. Oh, yeah? Yes, yes. And I want to remember. If you're a thread junkie like I am yeah. and love to collect pretty threads, but you're not really sure what you're going to do yeah. with them, perfect opportunity this to is use them. Awesome. I love <laughs> this. So clever. Good. Love it. Good. Okay, let's go this way. Oh, okay. wow. This is neat. Wow, this is, this is another one. Um, uh, again, this is uh, an applique, centered applique, mm -hmm. but this is all machine done. But if you really look at it, it looks like it could be hand done because I've used the uh, blind stitch applique. Yes. And so you just get a little pick in your fabric and then um, was working with our leather roller foot, which uh. is a foot that um, still has contact with the feed dogs, but you can really maneuver because it's just mm -hmm. a roller. Okay. And so your echo quilting is very easy to, to get with that. Your colors here are, are really wonderful, and you're using batiks again. Yes, I, I'm amazed yes. how hot pink that, that gets, that <laughs> batik. It's a batik, isn't uh -huh. it? Uh-huh, yeah. yes, that's a batik. interesting, interesting. Uh, any surprises on the back of this no one? No surprises on the back Just of this one. Just more lovely batiks. Yeah. No well, we, surprises. We have one more quilt uh, here, and this one is a, has a little bit different of a story, and of course it's wool, it's, it's different. It is a little different. This is actually the only quilt that isn't uh, one of my original patterns. Sure. This is one that I did um, from a pattern. This was really fun because it's a matter of cutting out pieces with no seam allowance. Mm, I've and never done that. Butting the edges up together. It's wool, so yeah. I could do that. And then on my machine, hmm. I used a feather stitch and I joined them back together. Neat. And I like the positive and negative feel of the of the basket. Definitely. Yes, that's that's and who is the designer? Do you remember? Well, we'll find it. We'll find it and put Black it up on the screen. Design, absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely Blackbird, yeah. sure. Um, yeah, beautiful, that red wool. So we have some small projects. We have some small Let's projects. Let me those. just pull these in and, and these are the last things that we'll look at. Mm -hmm. And these three uh, projects are, are just fun projects uh, that I did and actually if you look at them, they, I hope, they look seasonal. Yeah. There happens to be a season missing. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. Well, it's been a long winter. Who needs winter? I know. I'm like, <laughs> no, I know which winter? one's missing. It's fine. <laughs> Don't want to look at it anymore. But this is um, fusible applique yeah. and then free motioned. And mm -hmm. so for me, for this kind of project, I just went out to my front yard, picked a fern, laid it down, cool. traced around the fern, and then used those decorative stitches in my machine mm -hmm. to enhance what's there. So it's that quick, let's get the applique done so I can mm -hmm. embellish my applique. Yes. So yes. working with decorative stitches, free motion, mm -hmm. bobbin play, yeah. uh, embroidery, just uh, fun things. This size of a project is perfect for those sorts yes. of things. I mean, it's just, it's, and you could do, do it in a day. Yes. You know? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great. Again, mm -hmm. batiks cut up batiks and piece cut back up. together. Ah, that's Give neat. you different shading. Really interesting. Yeah. Cool. And then our And butterfly. the last one yes. is and the butterfly. This is actually... Uh, Let's take it down here. The just. first thing that I did for Bernina. Oh, neat. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and it was used, some of you may recognize this butterfly as mm -hmm. it was used in our advertising. Ah. Uh, and they gave me a picture and said, here, make this in fabric and stitches. So um, I loved doing it. There's bobbin play on here. There's beading. Yeah, there's yeah. some tufting. Um, Decorative stitches, Look at all pouching. These, all these details, those little triangles. Yeah. Eyelid embroidery maker. So wow. it actually made a little eyelet in the wing, wings. Now, and question, construction-wise, did you do one leaf, or sorry, one uh, wing section at a time and then put it together? I'm no, I actually, again, just fused the wings down okay. and then divided these little areas to fuse other fabrics down wow. and went from there. 
Great. Well, these are beautiful, Nina. So beautiful. And uh, if it, as a parting word to anyone who's who's got a, a machine that they they they're, it's new, it's their baby, it's their new thing that they're. Uh, what's some advice uh, for them as they as they test out stitches and and do different things? I mean, is there is there some tips you could give them for? Their the starting first their thing I would say is get to it, to ah, do it. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> because I think good. so many times yeah. we have these machines that do incredible things, but we do the same thing right. over and over. Right so over. venture out, um, feel, feel the way, yeah. you know, yeah. and find something that inspires you. Yeah. I'm all about anybody can do anything mm -hmm. that they desire. And if you really desire to do it, yep. you are going to be able to do it. Absolutely. You might have to get a little help here and there. You sure. might have to go back to your dealer and, mm -hmm. and know how do I do this, but but you will learn so much. Absolutely, and you will make time to do it. Yes. You know, I don't have time to sew, I don't have time to sew. If you get inspired, you will make time. Yes. Dinner, who needs it? You know, these things. <laughs> um, such a pleasure to meet you. Nina it McVay. was wonderful, I'm Mary. Thank you for coming on the show. And thank you. Uh, we'll see you next time on Quilt with the Stars. Bye-bye. This episode of Quilt with the Stars is brought to you by Baby Lock for the love of sewing and Koala Cabinets, sewing furniture, custom builds in America.